We are finally into Red Flag 10, and in this mission, we have to hit a couple bunkers deep in Redland territory. Well, in actuality, for mission success, we only have to hit the one bunker at Steer Point 10. But with a well-placed bomb shot, hitting that one bunker, you should be able to accomplish that with one GBU-10. So at the start of the mission, I go ahead and set a second steer point at one of the other primary targets. After all, why take out just one target when you can take out two? Once you have your second steer point set, unless you have some particular reason that you want to change your loadout, maybe just want to experiment with a different weapon set, you can go ahead and start the mission. The default loadout for this mission is adequate. Now, since we've gone through the launch procedure so many times, we're going to go ahead and jump right into flight. And in fact, we're pretty much going to jump all the way over to the startup of the mission. However, I'm going to take a moment just to portray some of these incredible views that DCS offers us. I've said it before and I'll say it again. There really is nothing else out there like DCS for realism of environment, realism of the aircraft, realism of the combat theater, and just plain beauty. Nothing else really compares. I do hope to see some more missions and activities happening in this Nevada map because it is absolutely gorgeous and apart from these red flag missions, honestly, I feel it's much underused. So at present, we are just completing our final orbit and beginning to progress into Steer Point 6. We're now heading directly into Redland. There's going to be a lot of air combat in this mission, so in preparation I've gone ahead and ordered my wingmen out into a loose formation so that we, well things will tend to happen quickly in this mission, and I want the wingmen ready for immediate response in a loose formation that won't inhibit our maneuverability. Up ahead, we see four F-15s running up against, it looks like three J-11A fighters. Those are the Chinese equivalents of the Sukhoi-27 which is a pretty good air superiority fighter that's been in service since, I believe, the Cold War. We can see its capabilities here as those three J-11s manage to take out the four F-15s. Not that the F-15s don't manage to get their own licks in, but in the end, the J-11s manage to end this engagement. Fortunately, we have more of our fighters coming into the area. Their job is to sweep the area before we get there because we are the strike package. We have air-to-air -air capabilities, but our focus needs to be taking out those bunkers. Showtime. You're dead. Colt 1-1, Darkstar 1-1, pop-up group 267-490 at 6,000 knots. Colt 1-1, Showtime. You're dead. If you pay attention to Darkstar as we approach the mission area, you can hear that there is a lot of activity. This is a very busy combat theater. And be prepared for it to stay busy as you progress into the area. There will be a lot of air-to-air -air combat. And, as the mission warns you at the beginning, there's going to be substantial SAM defenses available as, quotes, no time to take out those SAMs, as the assets are busy with other tasking. But for the moment, the action is way ahead of us. We're going to focus on just getting back into the combat theater. As usual, as you're flying in that direction, it's a good idea to double, triple, and quadruple check all your settings. Now, I set up the GBUs and the TGP way back at the runway, but it never hurts to go back over all your settings and make sure it's all all ready to go. On an actual air fighter as compared to, say, an ordinary video game, there is a lot going on. Even if nothing is happening outside, there is a lot going on at any given time in the aircraft. And so many systems, along with their various button switches and knobs to monitor that really any time you have a spare moment, you should be double checking everything all over again to make sure it is in working order because when you need it is not the time to realize that you haven't prepped it. All right, Darkstar, our friendly neighborhood AWACS, has just announced to us that the enemy has more J-11As going into the air. We can see them coming to the east out of the west, but there are plenty of F-15s and a pair of F-18s between us and them. They're likely to be down long before we ever have to think about dealing with them. Unfortunately, there's also a pair of A-10Cs attempting a strike, and they aren't going to have a chance against uh, a flight of J-11As. And don't get me wrong, I fly the A-10 in DCS a lot, 
I have literally hundreds of hours on it. I like the airplane, but if it was a BFM fight, they might stand a chance, but those fighters aren't going to conveniently give them a BFM. They are going to knock them down fast and hard with missiles. I mean, after all, they're fresh off the ground. I can guarantee you they're carrying some BVR missiles. In the meantime, while we're waiting for that engagement to go ahead and happen, I'm going to go ahead and prep the rest of my ship. Just double check, once again, my TGP and everything else in my air to ground mode, as well as go ahead over to my SMS page and make sure I have my external tanks ready to drop. It's always good practice, if you can, to drop those external tanks, especially if you're going into a combat zone, because those tanks will slow down your maneuverability even if they're empty. Dropping them might just give you that necessary edge and turning rate, and it will also give you some additional fuel efficiency if you're struggling to get back home. All right, at last the big engagement between the A-10s and the J-11s is happening. And all things considered, it looks like the A-10s did pretty well, by which I mean they managed to dodge the initial volley of missiles, most likely by ducking below those mountains that are between them and the incoming fighters. And if we pull out, we can see that there is another engagement happening up north between our flight of four F-15s and a pair of Su-37s. And in the time that it took us to look down south, the J-11As have managed to take out those two A-10s. Well, we knew that was going to happen. And if you look closely at the map, you can see at least the pilots made it to the ground. All right. We are deep into Redland territory. I've pushed it as far as I can with these fuel tanks and gotten most of the fuel out of them, and now it's time to let them go. Red Flag, Mission 10, is going to throw a lot of action at you. There are going to be more opportunities for air-to-air -air combat than you have experienced in this campaign in any other mission. In addition to that, there are going to be plenty of opportunities for evading SAM, so you have to keep your head on a swivel. These new clouds in DCS are just incredible, aren't they? And look at the shadow cover beneath there. I, I just can't get over the graphics that one finds in the simulator. DCS is absolutely gorgeous. And compared to other flight sims, it, it really always has been. However, it has been criticized for its somewhat weak artificial intelligence. However, the good folks over at Eagle Dynamics have made a number of significant improvements to that over the last few months. And sometime soon, I think we'll take a look at that. But as I said, this mission is going to keep you busy, really busy. Three has just spotted a SAM launch. Our own ship has detected the incoming missiles. And on top of that, we have fighters coming in overhead. It is time to hit the deck. I've ordered my wingmen into action, and now I'm heading toward the ground. I hate to think of the wingmen as disposable. You know, I like to really get into the sim and treat them as if they're actual pilots and they really matter. But in the end, the only way you're going to win an engagement is if you are the one who survives, even if your wingman can go ahead and carry out the mission, you'll still lose. So, ensuring that you survive is of the utmost importance. And the way we're going to survive these incoming missiles is to take cover close to the deck behind these mountains. And as soon as we have the missiles behind us, we are going to get back in the air and help our wingman out with those enemies up there. I see our boys are already sending missiles their way. Let's go ahead and add to that. There are three bogeys up there, and I won't be happy till there are none. It's a fairly short range engagement here, so I'm going to go ahead and target them with sidewinders. I'm suspecting that these guys may have already dumped their missile supply too on other targets, because they're not flying very aggressively. Because of that, if we weren't perpetually being targeted by SAMs on the ground, I'd probably aim to take them out with guns, but why use guns when you have sidewinders, right? We'll go ahead and confirm that kill before firing off the next one. Yep, he's hit, and our friendlies missile missed that bogey just to our left, so we'll go ahead and send that bogey one now. I can already see this looks like a good shot. And yep, he's hitting on his way down. And my boys have dusted the remainder of the bogey, so we're going to go ahead and get set up for our attack run. At the same time, I'm going to go ahead and order my wingmen to shift their focus to completing this mission meaning I need them to put their own GBU-10s on the target. I will tell you in advance, however, they're not going to do that this mission. There's a lot going on in this final engagement, and they end up flying mostly against air-to-air -air targets and evading SAMs this entire time. But it's still useful as it clears problems out of the way for me to go ahead and begin to set up my attack run on those bunkers. 
Now, with all that cloud cover out there, I am just too high. I'm going to have to lose some altitude before I can put a bomb on my target. Dark Star is getting very busy again. He's got a lot of news to share with us. Like I said, this is a very active theater. I'm just going to let my wingman deal with this and try to stay focused on the target. Doesn't matter how many birds we shoot down, if we don't take out those bunkers, we still lose this mission. All right, I'm more or less lined up. It's time to go ahead and lose that altitude. We're going to lose it fast. Keep an eye on your radar altimeter when dropping fast through mountainous country like this, when you can't really see how far you are above the ground due to cloud cover. Especially a map like Nevada, where the land is already thousands of feet above sea level and mountains can be thousands of feet higher. If you're not careful, you can easily aim to dive below the cloud ceiling and find yourself running smack into a mountain. All right, by the time I lose this altitude, I'm going to be very close to the target. So I've already gotten myself in air to ground mode, and I'm going to make sure that I'm ready to drop the bomb just as soon as I'm in position. The less I'm in the air over Redland territory circling back to drop bombs, the fewer opportunities the enemy will have to shoot me down, thus maximizing my chances to win this final mission. No matter how many times I've flown through clouds, I still get a little freaked out by it. I've got my radar off so I don't turn myself into a great big screaming pincushion inviting samfire, but it also means I can't use ground radar to have a better sense of where things are until I'm below that cloud ceiling. Anyway, there it is. We can see the enemy happily and conveniently at steer point 10, just where he's supposed to be. We were in the right position and we dropped a bomb. Now we're just going to bank left and make sure we keep the target well lazed until the bomb hits. Okay, left red side, bye. And that is one dead bunker. Now, I don't think we have to hit a second bunker to actually win the mission. But we're here, and we have an extra very heavy bomb pulling one of our wings down, so let's put it to good use. I'm going to touch up the trim to level out the flight some, circle away from most of the enemy's ground-to-air cover, and get set up for a second attack run. And I've ordered my wingmen again to attack and complete the mission targets, but they are so tied up evading SAMs and dealing with air-to-air -air problems, they, they just never manage to get over here. And that's unusual. Usually if I order them to complete and rejoin, they do manage to do some, some useful damage on the primary targets, but not this time. This time, it looks like it's all up to Cerulean. I'm assuming most persons watching this video are already familiar with how to drop a GPU or other type bombs. We're just going to line up the nose of the ship with that vertical line in front of us, fly in at about 400 knots and watch the carrot descend till it is level with our horizon line. And of course, remembering to press and hold the bomb release button from about 7 to 10 seconds before the carrot reaches the horizon line. That's uh, how the F-16 confirms that you really wanted to drop that bomb as opposed to just randomly and accidentally pressing that button. All right, we're lined up. So at this point, the goal is just to fly straight and keep the ship lined up on that vertical line. There isn't much happening now in the way of air-to-air -air defenses. And no SAMs or even AAA coming up, so this should be easy. Looks like the carrot is starting to move down. The moment it moves, or even before then, you press and hold the bomb release button. 
Once the bomb is away, we're just going to bank a little left if the TGP is mounted on the right. And along with that, I like to pull back on my throttle, usually about all the way and just coast and slow down to make sure we don't overfly the target so that the laser can adequately and appropriately guide the bomb onto target. And we can see from watching the MFD down to the lower left that the bomb hit successfully. And that is target number two down. So we have expended our ordnance, both our air-to-air -air ordnance and our air-to-ground ordnance, but we have a pair of AMRAMs just in case we need to fight. But the mission is complete, and for us, it's time to head home. I'm going to go ahead and order the wingmen back to base and scramble out of here. In the course of that scrambling, one of the other things I'm going to do is work on building up some altitude really fast. Both for your own protection, uh, against being hit by a random guy with a man pad or a AAA, you want to build up some altitude as quickly as you can and get up to what fighter pilots call blade land, which are the altitudes between 20 and 30 angels, that's 20 and 30,000 feet, at least to my knowledge, because that's where you're going to find the best fuel efficiency, as well as getting yourself up out of the ability of AAA and man pads to reach out and touch someone. And once back in the air, with our wingmen on the way back home, there really is nothing else to do other than putting the ship on autopilots and enjoying the scenery. On occasion, I might wait for the wingmen to form back up with me, but at this point, we're all pretty close to bingo fuel, so no, I'm just going to go ahead and start heading back. And with that, we successfully complete Red Flag Mission 10 and the Red Flag for the F-16 Viper campaign. Thank you for joining me for this walkthrough of the Red Flag campaign. It's been a pleasure. And if you like what you see on the Cerulean Skies channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It really helps, and there'll be plenty more content to come. You guys have a great day.